Welcome to another podcast for the Foundations of Science course. In this podcast, I thought we would talk about the idea of epistemology, which is kind of the theory of knowledge. Or, in more layman's terms, how do you know what you know? In this class, we try to distinguish between science and other ways of knowing, right? So you've had some experience with this distinction. For example, let's say you're walking down the street and all of a sudden you see a rat in the middle of the day. You might think, that's odd, because you know, rats are usually nocturnal or you know, mostly coming out at night. But there it is in the daytime, and so from personal experience, you may believe that rats are diurnal or that they come out during the day. That's one type of knowledge, and we've been juxtaposing that against science, which we've been defining science as a systematic way of knowing, right? So instead of just basing it on one observation, you might bring a rat into a controlled environment where you control the light or the time of day. You might also bring in more researchers in order to make observations to make sure that you're not biased in your view. Or you might test multiple rats, right, to make sure that the things that you're seeing are not just part of the one rat that you have observed. So these are two different ways of knowing, and they can both help you to make an explanation of what you see in your surroundings. But these aren't the only two ways of knowing. There are quite a few others. Uh, another one could be inspiration. So inspiration is seen as being the development of a thought from out of nowhere, right? So that's, this could be all of a sudden your, your brain has been able to make connections from information that you already knew. Usually it's caused from an external source, and so it could be that you see something that allows you to make a connection that you didn't see before. Other ways that people think about this is with regards to religion. So if people feel like they are being communicated to by a higher being, this falls under uh, inspiration, right? This is a way of knowing for them. Juxtapose against that is intuition, right? Where you get a feeling about something, although you may not have any explicit knowledge of it, right? I've kind of drawn it like an alien coming out of your stomach, but basically I'm just trying to get across the point that you're being led by your feelings or by your gut. Uh, another type is reasoning. So you don't have any more external information, but just based on the things that you know and using processes like logic, uh, you're able to gain knowledge about your surroundings. So with all of these ways of knowing, though, they don't just enter your brain, unfortunately. Uh, you also have these things that we've been studying in the course, which are called biases. And then so you might have a confirmation bias, or you might be affected by some things like logical fallacies, like the ad populum fallacy that we have studied earlier. These biases filter the information that you get from your, your ways of knowing and can affect what you either put into your brain or how you think about it. So these ways of knowing and this bias filter can happen to anyone. But if we're looking at you as an individual and how do you navigate this system, you have the exact same limitations, right? So you have a bias, but you also have the same ways of knowing that you can draw upon. Another way of knowing that we haven't discussed so far is authority. So much of your knowledge can come from an authority. And so when I mention authority, you might think in your brain, oh, it must be like the supremely intelligent uh, resource that I'm drawing from but it actually can range quite a bit. So you might have an authority like the TV. I know this probably doesn't look like a TV to many of you, uh, but in my generation, this is what TVs looked like. Uh, it could be from a book, so from your texts. Uh, it could be from teachers, uh, or it could be from friends. Uh, not all of them may be the, the most knowing, but they may offer you opinions and views that you take as being true, right? And so they have become the authority based on that uh, topic, right? So if they told you all rats actually are diurnal, if you believe it, then they have become your authority. Ways of knowing can influence uh, your explanation. And one of the, th the points that we've been trying to make in this class is that critical thinking is required for you to understand which way of knowing you're drawing upon to understand whether or not it's appropriate, right? So if you're taking a medication, you may not want to rely on intuition 
or inspiration or even reasoning because you may not have all the information at your at your fingertips. So if you're dealing with a medication, you will want to, to use science as your way of knowing. But one of the things that I find is that when uh, I talk to students and I ask them to post, you know, what information would you use in order to justify your decision? A lot of times they're always like, well, if I wanted to know which cheese cracker I really should eat or which is the cheesiest, I would do a, a science experiment. And although I'm super flattered and glad that you are so passionate about science, it doesn't actually make sense in that that's a lot of time and effort just to find out that cheesy -O brand cheese crackers are the cheesiest, right? That's a lot of double-blind studies where you're calling in hundreds of friends to test crackers and develop a, a quiz or a survey that you can get their responses. You know what? You could probably, as a way of knowing, just go for your friend's authority on this is the cheesiest cracker out there. Right? So not everything requires that you go to science in order to get an authoritative answer. So critical thinking helps you to make the decision of which way of knowing is best given the risk you're willing to take. So that's all for now, and we hope to see you soon in class. Carry on, science nerds.